Cryptology, or cryptography as it's more commonly known, is the study of hidden information. In this series, I want to talk about the methods of encrypting, decrypting, and cracking codes and ciphers. Is because all someone has to do is try every possible shift, and there's only 26 of them in the English alphabet, and they'll have your cipher solved. But this is a good way to demonstrate how a basic cipher works. It simply has rules that determine how the plain text is converted into cipher text. It's also a good demonstration of a concept known as keys. A cipher by itself is no good because all you need to know in order to crack it is the method that was used to encrypt it. But with a key, you can use the cipher in is because all someone has to do is try every possible shift and there's only 26 of them in the English alphabet and they'll have your cipher solved. But this is a good way to demonstrate how a basic cipher works. It simply has rules that determine how the plain text is converted into cipher text. It's also a good demonstration of a concept known as keys. A cipher by itself is no good because all you need to know in order to crack it is the method that was used to encrypt it. But with a key, you can use the cipher in different ways as long as you're using different keys. In this case, the key is the number of places in the alphabet that each letter gets shifted. If the key is three, then every letter in the plain text is shifted in the alphabet three spaces. So A becomes B, C, D, and then B becomes C, D, E, and so on. So in order to encrypt a message with a cipher, you simply shift everything over by the key number. In order to decrypt the message, you simply shift it over backwards by the key number. So, if I encode a message and send it to you, and the shift is 3, I shift every letter in the alphabet over 3 spaces. In order for you to decrypt the message, you simply shift it backwards 3 spaces. So what is cracking or breaking a cipher? To crack a cipher, you simply have to find a way to determine what the plain text is without starting with the information you're supposed to have to decrypt it. In other words, if somebody intercepted our little Caesar shift message and they found a way to crack it, they could read the text without actually knowing what key we use to encrypt the message. With the Caesar shift, this is extremely easy because all they have to do is try all 26 possible shifts and they'll have it solved. In fact, probability suggests they'll have it solved before they've even tried all 26. But if we used a more complex cipher, such as a Playfair cipher, this would be much more difficult. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. In fact, most classical ciphers can be cracked in one way or another, especially if you have the aid of a computer. Here's a piece of cipher text that was encrypted using a Caesar shift. I will not tell you what number I used whenever I shifted the text. I want you to brute force it until you find the one that works. Now, this may seem trivial, and that's because it really is. Any one of you with a, even a basic knowledge of cryptography should have no trouble with this at all, and I've probably told you something you already know during this episode. But I wanted to start at the very basics so that we're all on the same page. Over the course of this series, I'm going to demonstrate new types of ciphers, as well as how you encrypt and decrypt using them, plus, more importantly, how you break these types of ciphers. Also in this series, I want to give you some basic cryptanalysis techniques so that you can analyze ciphertext and determine what type of cipher was used to encipher it in the first place. 